Hi guys, this is part two of a series by Muslim apologists, two Muhammads, one hijab and one Osman, who are reacting, well, they're reacting in a Muslim apologist way to some claims made by another Muslim apologist, an Indian doctor, Zakir Naik, who in turn is using most of his well, very feeble and dishonest but highly comical apologetic stuff based on what a French doctor, Maurice Bouquet, wrote almost 50 years ago on how how to distort and alter the Islamic Quran to make it look as though the Quran is a scientifically accurate and b contains information only accessible to humans a few decades ago. That neither is true has been demonstrated again and again over the last few years. And in part one, this reaction by these two was still somewhat amusing. A huge mess based on linguistic distortion, projection and confirmation bias, showing the obvious mistakes in the Quran and those who try and interpret the sentences. But here, in part two, it actually gets highly deceptive and I'm more appalled by what I'm presented with. So we need to appreciate that this is what we non-Muslims will be confronted with by other Muslim apologists because they rarely go off and research and will rather copy what others like these two presenters here have told them to use. So Muslims dutifully follow what these two come up with and will be very surprised and feel treated somewhat unjustly when rational people equipped with critical thinking capabilities completely reject their highly dishonest line of argumentation, which they picked up here in these videos. So let's go through this video. Start with the left Muhammad, where he is extremely proud of himself, except that thousands have already done this. So we're going to go through, inshallah ta'ala, the very basics of knowledge that concerns us living here in the West, in delivering in quite a unique format that I don't believe has been done before. So what he calls knowledge, which in his case is based on confirmation bias using distortion, lies and fabrication, is not really that useful, has been done before, lots of times by all sorts of people who have two people sit together and discuss what others are fabricating. Uh, and we're kind of system systematically going through actually the balanced approach in dealing with these things. Uh, both from the perspective of people who are claiming that there are scientific miracles and those who are claiming that there are scientific errors. I think there, are, there is a problem with both of those approaches. So addressing both, the, the, the miracles and errors, is, is there really a problem with that approach? No. If the claims are scientific, verifiable and accurate, then it's, it's okay. I mean, if it's, it's not attacking scientific miracles, but miracle claims, because there's no such thing as a scientific miracle. That's an oxymoron. Okay, so now we get Nike. Is the Quran compatible with modern science? So let us analyze today whether this glorious Quran is compatible or incompatible to modern that science. The Quran ought to be 100% consistent with uh, modern day science. And this is wrong. I don't expect anything scientific or scientifically accurate, just basic truth, just something I can verify. Unfortunately, there are claims in the Quran which squarely fall into the realm of science, in geology, embryology, and so on and so forth. And they turn out to be wrong, erroneous, false, mistaken, failed. And the same thing happens when you look at the mathematical claims, and they equally turn out to be wrong. So you can't rectify that and keep the text the way it is today. Because you're taking science now as something being an undeniable, uncritical truth. Instead of repairing the text, they, they take a completely different approach, finding fault with science, where anyone in science will thank those who have taught them something. Muslims instead, they, they whine, they complain, or even get aggressive if shown that they are wrong. There's nothing that is considered an undeniable reality in science. And you can't yeah. say that there's 0% error in anything. What? There's millions of things which are undeniable reality. I mean, just look at limited lifespan of organic matter. Is that not true? The, the same limited lifespan of stars and, 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 and. Can I take a nuclear power submarine and fly to the moon with it? Or are there reliable scientific constraints here? Or can they change? Come on. The statements show that they simply don't understand science or anything scientific. And how many times do they need to be shown that before they stop embarrassing themselves? Why can't they grasp that they should cease from going anywhere near science? 
And then, well, here's another approach which is woefully inefficient and usually applied wrong. This is the quoting of others. Called The Structures of Scientific Revolution by Thomas Kuhn, who talks about the change in science. And he actually refers to it as a paradigm shift. So, number one, the guy's a philosopher, okay? Not, not a working scientist or something like this. And number two, he says history, or he views this, this whole topic as a historian. And this is the standard practice today. If you go and look at science, it was revolutionary maybe 50 years ago. And had they bothered to actually read the book, they might have found a very easy explanation here on page 205. And I, I don't understand why he still goes and does this if he claims that he's read the book. Not only do quote-unquote scientific facts change. Which fact changes? What exactly is a scientific fact for him? And why in air quotes? That we cannot use science as a definitive measure of truth, since it itself is not uh, definitely uh, true. This is probably the most stupid sentence I've heard this guy come up with. It, really, do I pray to get the voltage of my car battery or do I use a voltmeter with a certain degree of accuracy? Is it true if it says 12 volts or 9 volts? He has no clue what science is, yet he loves talking about it. Well, they both do. And then apply that to the Qur'an, which we believe is the word of Allah, the speech of God, right. which is undeniable truth. As a matter of 100%. 100% certainty. Okay. Well, it's the number one premise, and it's a faulty premise. Because, look, there's a lack of evidence here for said God, which you need before you can even start. Then you have an unproven ability of an unproven God, which is speech. Then you have the unproven quality of an unproven God, which is truth. And then it's deniable by anyone. It's a false claim due to multiple mistakes in the Quran, which you will not agree with and you refuse and reject because you, don't, you can't handle reality. And then they discuss some Arabic words, showing once again that they have no working knowledge of science, what it does and how it works. The first thing we're going to talk about is chapter 36 of the Quran, verse number 40, which is Surah Yasin, where it says, وَالشَّمْسُ تَجْرِي لِلْمُسْتَقَرٍ لَهَا So here you first get some Arabic mumbling for those who only know ancient Arabic and follow a video using the English language without understanding what is being said. Alternatively, it could be just an ancient, antique, superstitious act. And by the way, it's not 3640, but in my version, at least of the Quran, it's 3638. That the sun uh, runs to its a fixed time was a time uh, de uh, determined, right? Aha, uh -huh. it runs to a fixed resting place. Is running an accurate description of what the sun does? The sun runs its course, well, around Earth, of course, and then does the sun rest? Does the Quran mention that the apparent movement of the sun is due to the rotation of the earth? No, it does not. Like every sentence in the Quran, it requires interpretation. And this enables wild guessing and dishonest massaging of words until they represent not what is intended, but what you want. Add in some scholars where they all, they, where they all say something different, or consult the hadiths, which also contradict each other constantly, and you have the right mix to have the text basically say anything you want. Ibn Kathir, may Allah have mercy upon him, he says that there are two meanings for this verse. Right. One is a, a particular place, mm. and another is a particular time. Mm. Uh, the particular place he quotes from Sahih Bukhari, where the hadith of Abu Dhar, may Allah have mercy upon him, uh, he quotes from Rasulullah Sallallahu saying that, of course, the sun, it goes to its beneath the arsh, beneath the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where, where, where he was asked, where does the sun prostrate? And it says beneath the yes, arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Beneath the arsh. Okay. And the other opinion is that it is it travels to the end of its particular time, which is of course the, the day of resurrection, resurrection, the day okay. of resurrection, day of Qiyam. Really, is this interesting that there are two possible meanings? <laughs> this is the full extent of nonsense we're supposed to respect and believe. The Quran itself claims it's easy to remember and understand, that it is mubin, with, in other words, clear and straight. Yet not even Islamic scholars know what the Quran says and what the authors wanted to tell us readers throne of a god Come on, this is childish this is straight from fairy tales with a throne outside the universe a throne our son under a throne outside the universe kneeling 
Can the sun go under the throne in a heliocentric model? Uh, hardly. Or something, go, go to a resurrection day. It, if resurrection day, how does that tie in with Earth orbiting the sun? Nothing to see here. Nothing scientific, at least. Nothing verifiable. It demonstrates to what level the thinking processes of Muslim must be degenerated if they are forced by threats of eternal torture to believe all this mumbo jumbo. Is there anything as straightforward as saying that actually the earth goes around the sun? There is nothing straightforward, clear in the Quran that references either of these things. And this is correct. There is no sentence saying earth orbits sun or sun orbits earth. Or anything. But and this is now where you do need the context it, because it's not accurately described so you require context in the Quran the, everything points to and only makes sense with geocentricity not heliocentricity now there are ayats in the Quran that could be interpreted this way and it could be interpreted that no way this is the best any apologist come up with it's not clear depends on interpretation and because this was man-made, you require a context, and this obviously shows a static, flat earth in dozens of sentences describing it in exactly this way. Now, attempting to interpret this in a way to suggest heliocentricity and earth as an orbiting sphere are plain dishonest. The guy on the left is being disingenuous here by saying, we don't know anything about the throne, so we can't analyze or judge anything connected with it. And thus, we can't say what the sun does when under this throne, this unknown throne. And we can't come to a decisive conclusion. <laughs> oh boy. So if you're out of options at rescuing your beloved text, you, you either declare a miracle or connect it with the unknown or unseen or unknowable, and you consider yourself in a safe place. No, that's wrong. That doesn't do it for me or anyone with even basic critical thinking capabilities. That, I mean, the Quran is not being clear cut either way. Well, yeah, while, while this is true, there are some sentences like the ridiculous things like, like moon following the sun and every single sentence with sun, heavens and a moon, which assume a static, immovable and flat earth with sun and moon orbiting it, swimming in an orbit and they are very clear clips he was saying that according to the quran the sun has no revolution it has no rotation it has absolutely nothing yeah it's always the masked arab why is it him why do they feel so threatened by him why not why not invite him why not include any one of us and what exactly does he say the verse you just cited makes absolutely no mention of the sun spinning on its own axis and again the issue is does the quran say sun spinning around its own axis this is what we're talking about. So this is a blatant misrepresentation. No, he does not say the sun has no rotation. So here, he says that uh, it makes no mention of it spinning around its own axis. The most Arab he replies to a claim, saying the sentences in question do not mention any spinning on its own axis. That's a very different scenario. And Hijab even repeats the sentence. And then Ibn Abbas, not the Quran, says it is moving. Okay, where, what, how? Is spinning equal moving now or does it have something to do with it? No, this is now the dishonesty which is slowly creeping in. They're getting desperate and they must start lying. It is something that consistently is moving. Okay. It is moving. It's ignorance. Absolutely. And it, and it, and it kind of ignores all the tafasir. Absolutely. I mean. So they're now accusing Mast Arab of ignorance here because he's talking about a spinning sum. They can't show this in the Quran, they can't show this in Ibn Abbas, they can't show this anywhere, only some spinning wheel somewhere keeping the word spinning in there without any further reference and accuse the masked Arab of ignorance. Unbelievable. And the same approach as displayed all the time. The Quran is not clear, so you can't fault it. Well, I did not introduce the claim of scientific accuracy into the Quran, nor did the masked Arab. Muslims did and still do. So stop doing that and we will all stop correcting you. I'm fine and I think almost everybody who is non-Muslim is fine with mistakes and faulty descriptions of natural phenomena in an old book. Why aren't you? 
Which is really interesting because then you could approach the Quran from any perspective. Once again, go into a multi-layered kind of multi-dimensional approach. The of the Quran. And at the same time, if you're someone of our times, you don't need to reject heliocentricity in a sense. You can believe in he heliocentricity yeah. and still have make sense of the Quranic Absolutely. narrative. Absolutely. This is from the beauty of the Quran. This is from the ajaz of the Quran, the miracles of the Quran. Yeah. No, you can't. No, there's, there's no way anyone can honestly take the sentences in the Quran and make them describe reality in any way. It's impossible. It is wrong and impossible to twist and bend the sentences to make them seem right. Not if you're honest, you can't. You need to be dishonest and still add a miracle claim in there. Trying to wriggle the Quran in under the radar with a reduced set of accuracy does not work. At least not when you are putting the word science next to it. Either it is scientifically correct or it is scientifically wrong. The claimed miracle, the ability to be interpreted by ignorant people and educated people alike, is false. It is a fail. It is dishonest. It is not multi-layered. He also goes on to say that the earth... Uh, is on the back of a whale and this is well no actually he does not this is this is actually a lie because the statement is in form of a claim it's a quote made by a revered islamic scholar and is backed up by a source along with textual evidence so it's not the masked arab making this statement or claim another level of dishonesty here they can go and twist words, but now it's getting to the point But they are plain and blatantly lying and deceiving others. If the description by Al-Tabari is false, then take it up with those who propagate the contents, not with those reading what it says. Do you consider Al-Tabari to be a reliable source? Yes? No? Maybe? Don't obfuscate, rather clarify. And for example, Wiki Islamia has a great collection of which scholars have referred to the whale and how it supports Earth on its back, along with the usual apologetics, which is exactly what we are confronted with here in this video. Plain dishonest. And on Islam Q&A, you can read the entire story, which probably made perfect sense to a 7th century desert nomad. But to people here in the 21st century, these creation myths and legends are nothing but fairy tales. That the earth is, is round. Why round? How does round indicate a sphere? A flat earth can be round. Mama is a, is a turban. turban. And this indicates that something itself is circular. No, this is total nonsense, utter nonsense. This is ridiculous. Here's a round table with a turban around it. This is a flat earth representing a flat earth. So either this way or the flat way, so both versions are possible. Night and day are identical, whether flat or spherical, as we can easily demonstrate. Why can't Muslims check these claims themselves? Why, why is it that non-Muslims need to show how embarrassed they should feel? And then they find the claims are false. Why? Why can't they do this themselves? And Nike is dead wrong, or he's mistaken, or lying, or whatever. Well, you decide. And the other meaning of the Arabic word dahaha, it is derived from the Arabic word duya, which means an egg. Well, this claim has been debunked millions of times by now. In the Quran, daha, with a with a dahaha, with the ha is the it, um, is a verb. All right. So, this creator egged earth, really. No, in Arabic it's simply spread or spread out. This is definitely a lie and precisely why Nike did more damage to Islam than all apostates together could ever achieve. It is also the reason for all non-Muslims to laugh not with but at Muslims who believe this. And here our two apologists could have set the record straight and said no this is false based on Bukayism of 50 years ago and must be ignored. Do they? No. Uh, yeah, it's possible it could be, mm. it could mean this. But the problem that he's fallen into is by saying this is the meaning of the This guy still deceives others, saying the only problem is that he says that this is the meaning and not that it could mean egg-shaped. No, it could not mean egg-shaped. It can't. It is 100% impossible. Do I need to explain this again? Daha does not even refer to an egg. It is not derived from duhiya. It is grammatically different. In addition, if it were to say egg-shaped, 
that would be factually incorrect too, as our planet is nowhere near egg shaped, no matter how carefully you select the egg as visual comparison. But what this other person hasn't seen, the detractor of Islam, is that actually there are other verses that do substantiate it, right? No, they don't. That is precisely the problem. All sentences depict a flat earth with definite places for the sun to rise from and set at places. The rationalizer made a very good video on this, taking all these claims apart one by one. And then a Muslim red shirt tried to rip it apart and I shirt. Here he was left with egg on his face, simply confirming in the end what rationalizer had said. This was hilarious. So as you can see, it has like many meanings. Okay, like make it even, okay, make it like flat, right? Yes? Hang on, is this the verse he's saying is, says the earth is flat? Yeah. He, so he, here, the, the idea that the earth is round is supported by the Quranic discourse. Absolutely. Did his nose just get longer? No, he will say this with conviction even if he knows it is a lie. Everything in the Quran spells out flat earth. In my Mecca Wa'ata video, I showed this graphically. We're praying towards Mecca. In other words, this only works and can only work on a flat, sur on a, on a flat surface, on a flat earth. And this diagram here is from Wiki Islam. They have, this is a great picture of what this would mean if the Quran were based on a spherical earth, where a person praying might face one way and his back would be facing the opposite way, also towards the Kaaba, a big no-no in Islam. And I don't think Muslims pray like vertically down or at an angle to hit the Kaaba somewhere on the other side of the planet. Oh boy. You have Ijma on it. Yep, consensus. Yeah. Which again is the evidence in Islam. And this is the problem. They will lie to themselves and to others. And these others will then copy this, not realizing that this is making it open to obvious criticism based on reality and any Muslim who starts thinking will come across this and develop serious doubts. And we all know what that means. So why go there? All of them, it seems to me like it's not, uh, it can be interpreted in the line of 21st century science. It can be, it can. right? No, no, they can't. And number two, what if not? This is what you need to, what is the consequence? This is what you need to think of. What if this is really scientifically wrong? What have you then achieved? And number three, but what if they could? All you would have is something that does not contradict reality. And then so what? But number four, the Quran does contradict reality, as do the secondary texts of, of, of the Sunnah. They're forced to kind of the Islamic direction rather than Christianity, which is very clear about the earth being flat in, in, uh, in Job chapter 9 verse 6 and other places. Yeah. So because the Bible is more wrong than the wrong Quran, what good is that? It mentions this, the Sama falling on the earth. You see, flat earth required. No matter what they bring up, the prerequisite here is always a flat earth. We don't need to force scientific meanings on the Quran. Hang on, you, you are the one who's forcing it, not modern Muslims. It, it wouldn't make any difference to me and, and to most others. But to you, it seems to matter a great deal because you are prepared to lie and deceive over this rather trivial point. Why? Uh, but we can interpret the Quran in a way which is scientific. No, you can't. Science is based on facts and very specific. The Quran is based on faith and is vague, ambiguous, and is unverifiable or unfalsifiable, or both. Say that the earth here is being depicted as stationary. Yeah, and so what? Is, earth, is an earthquake happening right now, Binoy? Yeah, no. Yes, there are earthquakes happening all the time. That's how stupid, totally ignorant, and remarkably uneducated they really are. Yes, there are earthquakes happening right now. Because what they're trying to say is that, look, we know the Earth is revolving around its axis. No, they're not. That is another fabrication. And the claim in the Quran is that Earth is stationary without mentioning whether or not it is spinning. Because a planet can spin and remain stationary in its position. But these guys, with their limited intellectual capabilities, can't grasp that. And no, hardly anything on this planet is stationary. And humans are barely managing to survive. In fact, we need to kill the entire planet to do so, eliminating us in the process again. So both the meanings of mustaqar, to a place determined and for a period determined according to science is perfect. Nobody has determined, <laughs> determined this. No, scientists are saying the sun moves to spot. No, either he's hallucinating or he's intoxicated or a liar. Take your pick. That he says here, that's the solar apex. 
Is that something which the Mufassirin have said? The apex mentioned is the combined movement of our star relative to galaxy and universe. So it's neither a destination nor a place where this will stop. Is this mentioned in the Quran? No, of course not. We can say that the ayah is open to this. No, it is not, you fool. We should, we should never look at the Quran as a book of sign, a science, S-C-I-E-N-C-E. -E. Well, we should look at it as a book of signs, S-I-G-N-S. It's amazing that you said that. Yeah, amazing my foot. Well, it should not be contradicting nature in any case, and apologies should not lie to others. So in all, this video once again is a complete fail. It, it, it makes me angry that, you know, with, with their ignorance and, and the, the stupid worshipping of fairy tales, they are trying to fool others regarding this old book they call Quran. I don't, I don't really, I do not understand it. Why can't these apologists face and accept the facts and stop lying to themselves and others? <laughs> okay. I will never get it. Thanks for holding out until the end, taking interest in the video. And if you like it, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, give me a thumbs down. Do me a favor, tell me why. See you next time. Bye.